All right. Are you guys um, ready to ask questions? Yes. Okay. Shoot. What do you have questions on? Um, can we go to the practice test? Practice test. Okay. Um, I'm confused on 8A. Why you like divide things by 2? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. That has been an issue. Okay, hold on a second. Let me uh let me switch the screen. Okay. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the equilibrium retake practice? This this eight right here? No. Free response. Oh, okay, that's right. All right, let me make it bigger too. Okay, here's what I would say about eight A, or eight A B N C for that matter. Um. I think that, I don't know, what, I can't remember where I got this question from, but I think there are mistakes here. Um, the problem is that they're not turning this into molarity, true molarity. They're just using the one times 10 to the negative fourth. Like, I can explain why they divided by two, but they really should be, they really should be um, multiplying times 0 0.05 and then dividing by 0 0.1, since it's all yeah. together. <coughs> Excuse me. So. That was the first mistake in this problem. I wish I had read it more carefully. The reason that they divided it by two though is because of um, the amount of silver that has to go with the amount of sulfite. Okay. Um, and you divide that by two uh, because really, and if you're doing that, you know, that two S times S, the two S is the is this is the silver. I don't know. I don't like this question very much at all. I'm not gonna. There's not gonna be one like it on the exam. But that's why they divided it by two. That's my best. I think uh, Katie Lloyd. I think Katie. Didn't you come in and ask about this, or was it Lexi? Katie, would you come in and ask about? Um, I asked about number eleven. Oh. Oh, number eleven. Well, I would like to, I'd like to take a look at 11, I think again, uh, real quick, but, uh, oh, that's right. We'll look at 11 again, but number eight, um, that's why it's divided by two. It's not, it, it's not very good. I'll have to, I'll totally admit, I don't like number eight at all. Okay. So just kind of like ignore it. You can ignore number eight for now. Yes. Okay. Number 11. Katie and I had a good discussion about this one. This is frustrating because um, the NH4Cl is a solid. And because it's a solid, its concentration is basically one. So if you change the amount of NH4Cl, you're not necessarily changing. Here, let me, and let me draw it out like I drew it out earlier. Uh, let's go to, let me change the screen share to my bamboo tablet. Okay. So, um, you have this equation. NH4Cl as a solid is in equilibrium going to NH3 as a gas. That's a horrible three. NH3 as a gas plus HCl as a gas. And so K is equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. But since this is a solid, this just becomes one. So it's really NH3 HCl over one, okay? Now, since this is always gonna be one, even if you add a bunch of this, right, 
it will still be one. But the natural natural tendency would be to to make this say, oh well, if I add more solid, if I add NH4Cl, it's going to shift to the right. So, but here's your problem: if you produce more of the product, your K ends up being like a K2 ends up being larger than a K1. And the only thing that can change the equilibrium constant is temperature. But if you add concentration, you're saying that you can change the K by increasing that. So that's not the case. That's mathematically why you know it doesn't work. In reality, if I had a really good animation, you have a certain amount of solid down here. And it's able to produce two gases, NH3 and HCl. The thing is, if you add more solid, you're still, you only have so much NH3 and HCl. You can't just produce more of that because um, you're just, it's already in equilibrium. There's always, a, there are, there's already a set amount of these gases. So you can add a whole bunch of solid. It's like adding, it's adding solid to a precipitate. You can add a bunch of solid, but it's not going to change the amount of the aqueous in solution because there's no way you can, you can, um, you can't, you just can't get more of it out there because it's already in equilibrium. If it was not at equilibrium, then yes, adding more solid would get it to equilibrium, but it's at equilibrium. So that's not going to happen. So that's, that's the situation with A. I have a question, like, if the equation that we are given, like, everything is gases and there are no solids, right. does that change? Things? Yeah, that does change it. Because if you added more, and let's say NH4Cl was a gas, you add more of it, it shifts it to the right. Because if you added more, if you added more, and this, if this was really a gas, let me change yeah. the color. Oops. In your, in your situation, in the second scenario, if this was a gas down here, and these were both gases, and suddenly you increase the amount of gas in the bottom, to get back to K, you're going to have to increase the amount of your products, right? It's going to naturally shift to the right to get back to a K that it's supposed to be at, the, the only K that is available to it at that temperature. So in that case, yes, it would shift to the right. So gases and aqueous solutions, that's the situation. But anytime you have a pure liquid or a solid, will not happen. Oh, um, Julia and Nick wanted me to tell you to send them if you could like an invite to one of their emails because they can't get on. Oh, to one of their emails. Okay. How would I do that? Let's see. Invite people and, oh, I have to look up their email addresses, don't I? Yeah, Julia said, can you ask where to send my Yahoo email as invite? Okay, let me see if I can look that up really quick. Oh. Okay, Julia Renhall3 at Yahoo.com. Julia Ren. There we go. And what? And and t is Nick with her or Nick separate? Nick is with her. Okay, so that should work. All right. Um, Katie, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, Katie. Okay, so I thought more, and I and I read more about that. Um, about eleven on C when the volume is increased, and why that one stays the same. So if you have, um, let me just rewrite it. NH4Cl as a solid goes to NH3 as a gas plus HCl as a gas. Okay, so we have our container, let's say down here. And we have some solid that's the NH4, NH4Cl. And then it produces our HCl and our NH3. And so it has a certain equilibrium. So what happens though is that if you if you change the volume and you make it bigger, 
more of the NH4 is going to produce NH3. So there's going to be more NH3 and more HCl produced. But remember that the pressure will stay the same. If, if, if you stayed with the same number of molecules in a larger volume, your pressure would decrease. But to keep the pressure the same, you, have, you get more molecules in a larger volume. So that's why the pressure stays the same. Not because there is no more NH3 and no more HCl being produced, but because more is being produced to maintain the same pressure, the same number of molecules, um, or the, the same number of ratio of molecules to area as it was in the smaller one. Does that make more sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, CJ, I'm sorry. Uh, exactly. Oh, you got, okay, no eight. Okay. All right. Got your questions then. Yes. Um, Chloe wanted me to ask if you're putting this online and if she can take the retake during plus five because she's at the hospital right now. She's, why is she, oh, I don't need to know why. Like, your knee out or something. Oh, that stinks. Yes. Yes, she can do it later. And yes, I'm putting it online. I'm recording it right now and I'm going to, um, but it's going to take me, it's going to take me a couple hours to get it saved and put up. So I may not be able to get it because usually it finishes by like midnight, but I, I kind of want to be in bed by then. So I'm going to shoot for trying to have it up by 6 a.m. Okay. So if you tell her that. Okay. Okay. All right. So... Um, Priscilla, did, did Julia get the invite? I don't know. She didn't text me. I'll ask her. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Um, can we talk about number 9C on the practice test pre response section? Absolutely. Okay. Number 9 had, um... Methane plus water gives carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas. The Kc is equal to 5.7. And C is saying the equilibrium concentrations of CO and H2 increase when the temperature of the system increases. Is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic? And you have to justify. So you, have, you get a point for the prediction and a point for the explanation. And... The equilibrium concentrations of CO and H2 increase when the temperature of the system increases. Okay, so let me um, rewrite it on this paper here. So we have CH4, which is a gas, plus H2O as a gas is in equilibrium with CO as a gas and 3H2 as a gas. Okay, and it's saying if you increase the temperature, the concentration of CO and H2 increase. Okay, so that means that, <clears throat> that the forward reaction is favored if we increase temperature. So I would say that that means it's probably endothermic. It would be like saying that you had a delta H or you had a um, whatever the, the, the heat was, was on the, on the reactant side. Because as you increase, if you, if you it's, like, it's like your scale, like your um, teeter-totter. And if you increase on this side, Okay, then you've got a shift to the right. Oops. You've got a shift to the right to get it back to equilibrium. So does that make sense? That's and you're quoting Le Chatelier's when you do that. Okay. And we're gonna have to explain a lot of um, that Le Chatelier. Yeah, on the test tomorrow, right? Right, right, that's right. Welcome, Julia Hall. Yay. 
Hey. Um, all right. So we've only done a couple questions so far. We did number eight on the free response. And basically we said, don't worry about number eight anymore. That one's just irritating. And then we did uh, number 11, uh, 11A and 11C. Did you have any questions on 11A or 11C? Um, uh, we did on C, we wondered why it just stayed the same because we thought if the volume increased then it would like, the pressure would decrease. So you're right in that if the volume increased, the pressure decreases. So some of the solid, uh, some of the solid decomposes, giving you more molecules. Because if the pressure decreased and you just left it decreased, then then K would have changed. And you can't change K. The only thing that changes K is temperature, right? Yeah. So what actually happens is that some of it decomposes, so you end up with more molecules, but it's in a greater volume, so the pressure remains constant. You have to have more molecules in there to keep the pressure constant in order to keep K constant. I mean, that's what's actually happening. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so small volume, just a few molecules of NH3 and HCl. Big volume, you get more molecules then now of NH3 okay. and HCl to, to keep the pressure constant. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so are there other questions now? question on number two in multiple choice. Number two, multiple choice. Okay. There's an equilibrium. Water and carbon monoxide gives you hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. It's exothermic because delta H is negative. Kc is equal to 0.62. If 0.1 mole each of all of those were placed when the system came to equilibrium. Okay. Ooh, that's a fun one. Okay. Uh, let's see. H2O as a gas plus CO as a gas in equilibrium with H2 as a gas plus CO2 as a gas. Uh, all right, and then delta H is negative 42. So really, being exothermic, we'll just say plus negative 42 kilojoules over here. Because it's exo. Yeah. All right, so then if we have this whole ice thing going on, And Kc is equal to 0.62. So this is zero. So, or I'm sorry, we're zero point, oops, 0 0.1. Did I just change the color? I did, didn't I? Uh, there we go. All right, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. Okay, so your question is, which way is it going to shift? And so what you have to do is you have to find Q first. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So Q is equal to the product of the reaction. So H2 times CO2 over H2O times CO2. No, I did that wrong. Oh, this is just supposed to be CO. Sorry. Product over reactant. So this is just CO. Let me erase that. Okay, which is equal to 0 0.1 squared over 0 0.1 squared, which is, isn't that all just going to be equal to 1? Yeah. Yeah. So 1. So then if we do this K and Q, which is greater, Q is greater because K is 0.62 and this is 0 0.1, which means it's going to proceed towards the reactants. So we're going to get plus X. And plus x, this is going to be minus x, this is going to be minus x. So 0 0.1 plus x, 0 0.1 plus x over 0 0.1 minus x, 
0 0.1 minus x. So the temperature would decrease. Um, yes. So so what that means is it's going to shift. So we don't have to actually do the, the actual calculation to find equilibrium concentrations because we can just say um, it's going to go this direction, which means we're going to, in order to get this direction, we're going to end up having to decrease all of this. This is all going to decrease. So H2, CO2, and heat are going to decrease. Temperature is going to decrease going this direction. And we're going to increase on carbon monoxide and H2O. So of the answers, that's A, C, or E, and only A says the temperature would decrease because you're losing that. You're losing the heat okay. to get back, to get the actual K. So like when we, oh wait, never mind, I understand. Okay. Thank you. Sure. That was a good question because that was a, it, I would not have seen that or thought about that ahead of time. But yeah, having to find Q first and then, and then compare it to K. Yeah, that's why I couldn't figure out because we didn't find Q. Yeah. All right. Other questions? I think Sneha had some. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't look at the chat. Uh, Sneha, multiple choice 4, 11, 13, and 3 in the simple free response. Okay, let's do it the multiple choice 4, 11, and 13. Number 4, solid mercury oxide, liquid mercury, and gaseous O2 or oxygen are placed in a glass bulb and are allowed to reach equilibrium at a given temperature with that equation. Ooh, look at that one. Delta H is positive 43.4. The mass of HGO in the bulb could be increased by, <laughs> okay, so um, this one's a royal pain, it's tricky. Okay, so number four, we have uh, two HGO as a solid, not truly affecting our, our equilibrium calculations. 2-HG as a liquid, not affecting our calculations, and O2 as a gas, definitely affecting it. So that means that K is going to be equal to the concentration of O2. That just sounds weird to me. So, um, oh no, it messed up again, didn't it? I hate it when that happens. Let's go back. All right, okay, so we wanna know how HGO could be increased. So what would shift this reaction? What's gonna shift this reaction in this direction? What's gonna be reactant favored? Reducing the volume. Right, so you, you can, HG is, that's just one. Like if you change the amount of mercury, the concentration is just one. So you you doesn't matter what you do with the HG. It's not going to change your your it's not supposed to change your your equilibrium. Removing some O2. If you remove the O2, you're going to end up it's going to shift back to the right to get more O oxygen. You're going to need to get more oxygen out of the HGO. That's not going to work. Increasing the temperature, it is endothermic. So the 43 kilojoules whatever is on the left. So if you increase temperature, that's gonna shift it to the right to get more oxygen. And if you remove some of the HG, well, that's the same thing as A. It's not gonna do anything because it's a it's a liquid, pure liquid. So its concentration is just one, so it doesn't matter. So that leaves us just with reducing the volume. And if you reduce the volume in order to keep the same pressure, to keep the same pressure of the O2, you have to reduce the number of molecules of O2. And that means it will shift to the left and end up giving you more HGO. So um, on number four, does that make sense, Sneha? Okay, I get it. All right. Now Sneha wanted number 11. Uh, 11 and 13. Okay. 11. Yeah, I wasn't sure what's with the answer options for 11. 11, let's see. Four... 
For barium sulfate, with a KSP of 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10th, if you mix 200 milliliters of the 1 times 10 to the 4th barium nitrate and 5 milliliters of the... Ooh. Okay. So number 11. Um, what you have to do... This is not going to be an ice table. You're finding Q. Q yeah, is equal what to. What I did is I solved for the moles of barium and then the moles of the sulfate. Okay. And then found the concentrations of both and then used that to find Q. Right. And then I got that Q was greater than K, so. Okay. That means that it would shift to a precipitate, right? Right. Right, because. Oh. Which. I guess A and B look like they're the same answer? Yeah, yeah A and B and then C and D are the same answer, so... Oh, that seems silly. Okay, so and, uh, I think... all in the same direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it should have been... Um, let me let me uh, just switch you guys to, to my view of the key. I think that this key was meant to do... Uh, that. Can you guys see this key now? Mm -hmm. Is it big enough? So, yeah, yeah. I think it's what that's what it should have been. So you would have the, the, the opposite directions for each of them. So that's why A would be the right answer. But it's, if you're doing everything right, then that's why A is the right answer. That makes sense? Yeah. You, okay. All right. And then the last one is 13... The solubility of salts can be... Oh, okay. So honestly, we haven't gotten on this yet because it's... Um, we haven't done it yet because of the fact that it's acid bases. So I'm going to show you the my bamboo paper again. Um, so number 13... So what's happening there, when you have FeCO3, um, if you have if you have anything with Na, it's soluble, right? Because they're all alkali metals. Um, if you have anything with an H in there, an H will combine with the CO3 two minus to give you H2CO3. It's a weak acid. And um, I don't know if you remember this from Gen Chem, but weak acid versus strong acids, weak acids mean that it doesn't dissociate. So it's kind of like a precipitation problem where you have H2CO3 in equilibrium with H plus, two H pluses plus CO3 two minus, but it would rather Going this direction is a much stronger arrow because it would much rather stay in this form. Ugh. Did it again. I think I messed up my whole paper on that one. Okay, can you see the paper now? Uh, you're frozen. Okay, there. Okay. So the H2CO3, it wants to be here. It's like the precipitation problems where it would rather be in the precipitate rather than the aqueous ions. The weak acids would rather be in the molecule than the aqueous ions. So um, in that situation, that's why if you combine hydrogen with any of those, hydrogen or CO3 with, this, with the FeCO3, you're going to affect the solubility. Okay. Um, not a question on this test could be a question on future tests. Okay. All right, so that means we've done 4, 11, and 13. Uh, let's slip in, let's do CJs real quick on number 10, and then we'll go back to number three on the first response. So number 10 right here, calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Oh, this is a fun one. So, Uh, if you have a reaction, CuCl as a solid goes to 
Cu2 plus plus C, uh, 2Cl minus. And the other reaction is going the other direction, which is Cu2 plus plus uh, 2I minus is in equilibrium with Cui. Oh, wait, never mind. Those aren't two pluses, those are one pluses, huh? My apologies. That's why there's not a two in front of those. Real C quick about plus. problems like this. Yes. Are we gonna have to know how to like multiply exponents and all that without a calculator? These um these reactions are or these questions are not true AP multiple choice questions. So these ones are ones that uh, you would probably do with a calculator. Um, if they were ones that they expected you to do, um, the ones they would expect in multiple choice, they would be ones that would be a lot easier to do. Okay, with, cool. So I don't have to know like kind of laws of exponents and stuff. Not so much. <clears throat> okay, cool. I think you could figure this one. I mean, you could probably figure this one out because the exponents are so far apart. But yeah. okay. So for this one, you get the KSP going this direction is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the negative 7. And KSP going this direction is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 12th. Okay? But they're going in opposite directions. It wants to know the K of the whole thing. Now, the CU pluses end up going away because they cancel out on both sides. Okay, do you guys get that? Uh, and then you end up with CUI as a solid plus CL minus as an aqueous. So now that we've combined them both, when you combine equations, usually what you do is you your K total is equal to K1 times K2. All right? But you have to remember that your K2 is in the opposite direction, which means that really K total is equal to K1 times 1 over K2. Because remember, if you reverse it like that, you have, you have to do 1 over K. Do you guys follow that? So K total is equal to um, 1.9 times 10 to the negative 7th divided by 5.1 times 10 to the negative 12th. And so um, if you wanted to be really tricky or not tricky at all, it doesn't really matter. If you did um, negative 7th divided by negative 12th, uh, you know that it's like um, when you divide them, it's like subtracting them, right? Negative 7 minus negative 12 equals positive 5. So then it's 1.9 divided by 5.1 times 10 to the fifth. Are you guys following that? Yeah. Yes. So then if we go back to the problem and look at our options, let me just op open that up. So this is this is why it's still feasible, but which one is closest to 10 to the fifth? It's just C. That's the only option that's even close. So you didn't even need your calculator necessarily. I mean, you could logically figure it out. And he was kind enough to separate those so far apart. So does that make sense? I think CJ, you had that one. CJ, you good with that? You don't get how it's inverted. Um, okay. Let's go back to... No, I did it again. Sorry, let's go back to my bamboo paper. Okay. So, in an equation, it gave KSP, the solubility product for this. So, if, if CuI was in equilibrium going to Cu plus plus I minus, that KSP is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 12th. But 
This is and this is the big but. The the KSP is for it, only if it goes this direction. But as you can see from the reaction up here, it's in the opposite direction. So by the properties of the of the K, this is something we talked about. If you reverse the reaction, you have to do one over the K. If you multiplied all the coefficients by two, you'd have to do K squared. This was something we talked about early on. That's why it's it's why it's one over K. It's not it's not K for the reverse reaction. It's K for if that reaction had been normally written. That's what the K would be. But because it was written in reverse, that's why it's one over K. Okay, you got it? All right. So now we're gonna go to number three on the simple free response. All right. If the molar concentration of lead bromide, PBBR2, in an aqueous solution is 1.6 times 10 to the negative sixth molarity, what is the concentration of PB2 plus and Br minus? And... So wouldn't Br minus just be the PB2 plus times two? Yeah. That's not what it is in the key. It's not what it is in the key. Really? No, it's some really weird number. Okay. This is my key. Maybe and maybe I'm almost up. And maybe I have to read redo check it out. Oh, it gave it wait. 2.56 times 10 to the negative 12th. Uh, yeah. So if you double the concentration, it should just be 3.2 Right. I think whoever wrote this key would try to, to do it squared. They took the 1.6 times 10 to the negative oh. 6 and they squared it. They did 2x two square, two squared. So that's why that one doesn't okay. look right. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, because then, I mean, what they, what should have happened is that would be the value for the, I think that too, uh, let me grab my calculator. Okay, so what they did is they, when they, they made a mistake, when they wrote the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6, they squared this, and that gave them the 2.56 times 10 to the negative 12th. So they didn't, okay. it, what should have happened is that, right, so that you would plug this number in for your bromine, your bromide ion, and then you would square that, and that would give you like 1.03 times 10 to the negative 11th or whatever, that you would, when you actually had to find the K, if they were asking you to find the K, they're not asking you to find the K there, but. So, okay. Okay, so that's a, and yet another mistake. I need to fix this key. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Other questions? Any, any questions on the test, the test that we already took? <clears throat> D on the free response because um, because K is not small <clears throat> enough to like take the X's out, so uh, it's very complicated to solve. Yeah, so you just have to do it. No, it's not. You guys are faking yourselves out. Nick helped me. So you just have to do the quadratic formula. No, you don't have to. Here, let me uh, let me show you. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, can you guys see this test now? Can you see my test? Yeah. Okay. 
So, um, and Amanda, is this the same? This is one of the two that you had a question on too, that a free response on the real test? Yeah. Okay. So, and C. And C, okay. Yeah, so I have, so you guys can see this here, makes it a little bit easier for you, but, but let's look at D for just a second. Do you see how the concentrations are the same for both sides of the reaction? So it's just yeah. going to end up being x squared over 0.167 minus x squared. So then you can square root it. Oh, that's annoying. So then you end up with the square root of 5.04 is equal to x over 0.167 minus x. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Sure. Does that make sense to you, Amanda? Yeah. Okay. And then on C... You can kind of see it. Um, the th what you had to do is because it was 30% of carbon monoxide and the carbon monoxide was 0.55, it was subtracting 0.3 times 0.55, whatever that number would be, you subtract from CO from H2O and you add that exact same number to H2 and CO2, which is only possible because all the coefficients are one. And then you get your new equilibrium concentrations, you plug those back in and you get the K at the new temperature. Yeah. Seeing the key probably gives you guys a better idea of how that works now. All right, so any other questions on that? Any questions on any of the the rest of the test? So the free response is going to be more like writing out like sentences as opposed to like math stuff. Yes. Well, there's going to be there's going to be a question. I mean, there's going to be a question where it's similar to the um, the equilibrium practice test where you had at the end where you had to give explanations for each one of those, like number eleven on the on the practice retake or retake practice. So there's gonna be a question like that. And then there'll be another question that is a, um, just a straight equilibrium calculations problem. Okay. So the free response is like that. And then the multiple choice has more questions that, that not as many questions that are equilibrium. I mean, that are Le Chatelier's based. They're more general concepts and calculations, something like that. Okay. The calculations won't be as difficult as this practice test, right? Right. Yeah, right. You're right. They will not be. So any other questions? I think we're good. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I mean, from over here. Okay. That's good. Well, it's at 6.30, right? 6.30, yeah. Make sure, just to make sure you guys have enough time. I don't know if you'll need the whole time, but that should be good. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Great. I think Amanda had more questions. Uh, you may have more? No, I'm oh, Amanda does. Oh, I just saw them. Free response to see. Oh, multiple choice 893. Okay. Let's take a look. All right. So, 8 eight and 9. So, 8, when the substances in the equation above are at equilibrium, at pressure P and temperature T, the equilibrium can be shifted. You're welcome to favor the products by, so because it's exothermic, if you, so um, if you increase the pressure by adding this, an inert gas, adding an inert gas doesn't actually increase the pressure of the individual gases. Their pressures, their partial pressures remain the same even though other gases are in there. That's the whole, that's why they keep saying inert 
because they're trying to tell you, hey, it doesn't interact at all. And so the partial pressure, and really that's all we're looking at, the partial pressure of the gases, right? That's what, if we're doing the, the K, it's based upon the partial pressures. So the partial pressures remain the same even if there's an inert gas in there. If you add other gases, the partial pressure of those two gases remains the same. So A cannot be the answer. C, if you allow some gases to escape at constant P and T. So, so they're doing something because if it stays the same pressure, then um, if they're keeping the same pressure and there's the same number of moles on each side, then the equilibrium stays the same. So it's not going to favor one side or the other. If you add a catalyst, it speeds up the reaction going forward and the reaction going in reverse. So that doesn't affect your equilibrium. So really it's just the temperature. And that if you decrease the temperature, remember if you've got your teeter-totter and, and, and delta H is exothermic, you're decreasing on the product side. So to get back to equilibrium, it's gotta, it's gotta go back towards the products to get back to equilibrium. So that's why I would favor the products. So that's why number, why that's the answer to number eight. Are you good with that, Amanda? Maybe, okay. Number nine, uh, 0.4 moles of SO2 and 0.6 moles of O2 are placed in evacuated. So those are the initial concentrations. After the reacting products reach equilibrium and the initial temperature is restored, the flask is found to contain 0.3 moles of SO3. Um, so, if I was just going to write this out, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and change the screen share to the bamboo paper again. Okay. And so we have um, 2SO2 as a gas plus O2 as a gas and an equilibrium with 2SO3 as a gas. And then you would just need to set up the ice table. The initial was 0 0.40. The and it's all it's all molarity at this point, because moles per one liter. And the O2 was 0 0.60, and this was zero. The change, <clears throat> we don't know. And the final. The SO3 at the end was 0 0.30. Well, we knew that it was zero here, so the reaction moves to the right, which means we added plus 2x because that was the, there was a coefficient of two. So if 2x is equal to 0 0.30, then x would be equal to 0 0.15. And if we're subtracting uh, this side, we minus two, minus two times 0 0.15, and this would be minus 0 0.15. So that means that we're gonna have an equilibrium of 0 0.10 and 0 0.45. And so the um, K, which is equal to uh, SO3 squared over SO2 squared, times O2, that means that K is going to be equal to 0 0.30 squared over 0 0.10 squared times 0 0.45. And that's A. So that all works out there. That was number nine. All right, so Amanda, we've done eight and nine. Are you okay on those? I'm going to answer Snea's question, CJ. I have to answer Amanda's yes. Okay, and then uh, Amanda, you asked, so eight, uh, what was it? Eight, nine, and three. Okay, um, equal numbers of moles Initially, of HCl and O2 are in a closed system, and then allowed to reach equilibrium as represented by the equation above. Which of the following must be true? Okay, so um, if we are, let me go back to, let me share my test.
Okay, so uh, number three, there was, um, it started with HCl and O2. So number one, HCl must be less than Cl2. Um, that one, you don't know how much HCl was used up and how much Cl2 was produced. So number one, you can't know for sure. So number one shouldn't be a part of any one of the choices. Number two, O2 must be greater than HCl. That part is yes, because there are four HCLs used up for every one O2, which means if you started with equal numbers of both of them, if you even start with 10, every time you used four of these, you only use one of these. So if you start with 10, four away gives you six of HCl but, and nine of O2. Um, so that one has to be true because of the number. So your answer has to have Roman numeral two in it for sure. So not one, but definitely two. And then three, Cl2 must equal H2O. Those coefficients are both two. And since they both started with zero, every time something is produced, you are producing the same amounts, two moles and two moles. So the concentrations, yes, have to be the same because their coefficients are the same. So two and three, and the only one that does two and three and not one is letter C. Does that make sense, Amanda? It's all the code. Yeah, could you also do number one? Sure. Um, some pure O2 is injected in the reaction vessel at constant temperature. After equilibrium is established, which of the following has a lower value compared to its original value at the original temperature? So because it's a constant temperature, you know that the K has to stay the same. The only thing that changes K is temperature, and the temperature is the same. So that means that A is out because um, temperature is the same. Uh, the pressure, the total pressure in the reaction valve, um, if, you, if, if uh, O2 is added, it would shift it to the left. So, but you don't know how much O2 is added. So the amount of O2 added may counterbalance the amount of SO2 that's consumed to make SO3. So the total pressure might be, might be the same, might be more, might be less. Again, we don't know. Um, the amount of SO3 in the reaction vessel actually goes up because we're adding the O2, which means it's going to shift to the left. It's going to shift to the, it's going to favor the reactants. So the SO3, the amount of SO3 is going to go up. The only one that we know is going to go down for sure is the SO2 because you have to consume SO2 to make more SO3. And they added O2, so that one may have gone up, but uh, O2 then consumes SO2 to help make the SO3. So that's the, the SO2 we know is the only one that actually went down when you add O2. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, Sneha, free response 9B on the practice test. The, oh, the, the, um, the practice retake, let's see. 9B, oh wait, am I looking at the wrong practice test? It's the practice retake test. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, you're right. That was a mistake. But instead of 0.215, it should have said 0.125. Okay. Would the number be different if it was 0.125 versus 0.215? Yeah, the actual answer is 23.9 instead of 13.9. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. Oh, wow, that's a big change. Oh, yeah, because you that makes sense because 0.125 is almost half of 0.215, so that would double the 13.9 almost. That makes sense. Okay. Good catch. I'm going to have to go back and change all these. i got to remember to do that before we leave this unit. All right. Other questions? I think we're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we covered a good bit. It's been almost, almost an hour here.
real quickly, can you explain why it's low pressure in multiple choice three? So are you, um, CJ, are you talking about multiple choice three on the equilibrium practice test? Yes, okay. So, uh, so that we have, we have uh, nitrogen plus hydrogen gives you ammonia. Our little, um, we've been using this equation a lot. The conditions that would favor maximum conversion of the reactants to products. So we want to do something that's going to favor the products. Oh, and heat. Okay. So again, imagine you're teeter-totter and um, what's going to favor the product side? Well, if, you, if you're only talking about pressure and temperature, if you... And there are four moles of gases on the left, and there are two moles of gases on the right. So what's going to push it to the right, but high pressure? If you increase the pressure, that decreases the volume. And if you decrease the volume, then you need fewer molecules. And the right side, the product side, has fewer molecules. So high pressure is why it would shift to the right to reestablish equilibrium. Does that make sense? I hope. And the, and the temperature thing, yeah, reestablish. Okay. And then the, you know the temperature one, because it's on the right side, you need it to be low temperature so it'll pull it to the right. Okay, good. Okay. Any other questions? I'm good. You good? All right. Well, it was a good session. I, you guys had a lot of good questions. Um, and I will be, um, I'll be saving this and putting it on the uh, website in the equilibrium folder, in Schoology in the equilibrium folder. It should be up, again, I, I think I told some people earlier, by 6 a.m. if anybody asks. But of course, you would then only have a half hour to review if you need that. <laughs> I'll try to get up there as quick as possible. Okay. Thanks. You are welcome. Have a good night. Make sure you get some sleep. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye, guys.